happy to allow all participants to join in. Till then, let me run you through some couple of housekeeping checks. If you can hear me clearly, I request you to please type yes in the chat box window. I repeat, if you can hear me clearly, I request you to please type yes in the chat box window. Okay, great. I see a couple of yeses there. That means I'm audible. Throughout our presentation, we encourage you to interact with our speakers by typing in your queries and comments using the questions pane. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible in our Q&A section, which is right after the presentation. First of all, on behalf of Harbinger Systems, a warm welcome to all of you and good morning and good afternoon. I'm Sushant Saraswar, Marketing Executive of Harbinger Systems and your host for today. I'm pleased to welcome you for today's webinar, Digital Health, the new Rx for USA Healthcare Ecosystem. Let me introduce to you our speakers for today's session, Ulkit Kapoor. Ulkit has taken the role of business analyst at Harbinger Systems. Ulkit with almost 3.5 years of experience in US healthcare practice and pre-sales has developed various offerings and solutions for US healthcare payer and provider industry. He is well versed with Obamacare reforms, CMS compliances, healthcare insurance exchange, ACO, EHR, EMR, payer and provider management solutions, etc. In short, he is our in-house domain expert for healthcare. And joining Pulkit, our second panelist for today is Satish Bohr, Associate Tech Lead at Harbinger Systems. Satish with 4 plus years of experience in design and development of enterprise systems across healthcare and e-learning domains, has worked on multitude of challenging projects with technologies ranging from J2E, Hadoop, Edgebase, mobile technologies and many more. So with the introductions being done, without further ado, I hand over the presentation to Pulke. Thank you, Shushant. So we are going to today we are going to talk about digital healthcare. So first we will talk about how digital healthcare has transformed the entire healthcare ecosystem. And what are the you know, the impact on uh, of digital healthcare on ISVs, payers and providers? How these three stakeholders get affected from digitization? Next, we will talk about digital transformation of healthcare processes. So, what are the different healthcare processes which got transformed? So, first we will talk about wellness and fitness. What are the new enhancements and new portals and applications which are coming up in wellness and fitness market segment? Then we will talk about patient communication. So, it was a time when patients or members they used to you they used to manually go to a hospital or to a provider to fix an appointment with a provider or doctor. But now, with the help of digitization, the entire ecosystem has changed. So now they focus, you know, they just download an application or a portal. And with the help of those application or portal, they log in and fix an appointment with a provider of their choice. So we are going to talk about patient communication in depth. Then we'll take the most burning topic of US healthcare, EMRs and EHRs. So we'll talk about the different types of patient portals, provider portals, which are available in the market and what are the needs and enhancement in those areas. Then we'll talk about preventive healthcare. How preventive healthcare has affected US healthcare market and what are the benefits, you know, what are the features and business benefits out of preventive healthcare. Then we'll talk about tools and technologies enabling digital healthcare. What are the latest technologies? and tools which are available in the market and to enable those digital healthcare changes. Then at last we will have question and answer round. So to start with, I will start with the introduction and evolution of digital healthcare. So first I will talk about the basic definition. What is digital healthcare? So digital healthcare is nothing but an umbrella term for all the healthcare related applications. So these applications are nothing you know but a web-based portals or the applications which are used by payers, providers or other healthcare domain experts. It make use of interconnected technologies 
So when I say technology, all the latest technologies like big data, cloud-based computing and all those things are interconnected with each other to embrace the entire spectrum of healthcare providers, consumers and researchers. So you know, the entire spectrum which involves payers, providers, patients, members and all the things, all those stakeholders are interconnected with each other with the help of our you know, new digital healthcare segment. And all these activities result in improved care quality and access. Improved patient engagement. You know, the lot of uh, patient engagement activities are going on uh, from payer side as well as from provider side in which a patient will be able to communicate with both payers as well as with the providers with the help of applications and portals. Closing communication gaps. As I said, you know, uh, there is no communication gap between the payers or the providers or the government body that is CMS. So this point, uh, you know, talks more of ISVs. So most of the ISVs or the startups, they have identified various patient needs and based on those, their needs, they are coming up with new technologies, new applications, new web-based portals which are helping the patient to increase, you know, to have a improved care quality and the access of care. And we'll talk about, you know, decision making by consumers and providers. So nowadays, they are most focused, you know, a, com a combined decision making is done with the help of the patient as well as the providers. And all these activities under digital healthcare, these activities has resulted in the reduction of healthcare cost. As we all are aware that healthcare in US is very expensive, but with the help of digitization, you know, the healthcare cost is already very reduced. So to start with, we'll start with digital space. You know, we'll talk about the various segments, the market segment which comes under digital space. So there are around the 16 or 17, you know, uh, market segments which come under digital space. And all these segments are, you know, very fascinating by the ISVs and the other companies. They are coming up with new ideas under each segment and they are building new applications, new portals for providers as well as for payers. So we'll start with population and social health. So one very good analytics example is seen under population and social health in which CMS as well as the health insurance company, they analyze the population of a particular area. For example, we'll talk about Texas. So they analyze the entire population of Texas and what is their health record and what are their EHS and EMR. So suppose they found that in Texas, the number of patients for diabetes is more as compared to any other disease. So they are going to launch a new program or they may launch a new plan or health insurance company may launch a new plan for diabetic patient in that particular area called Texas. So such type of, uh, you know, in-depth analytics are present in the market today. And we'll talk about provider engagement. When I say provider engagement, it means that the engagement of the providers with the payers as well as with the government bodies or CMS. So in which they use, they use latest EDF formats and all those stuff to communicate with the payers, the health insurance companies, and sometimes with the uh, CMS. Then we'll take about take uh, sensors and tracking. You know the various you know wristbands and all the you know tracking devices are available in the market. With the help of those devices and sensor, we can track track our vitals, maybe our blood pressure, maybe any other type of vitals, and can record in my application or in my folder. And based on those vitals, a doctor or a provider is going to prescribe me exercise or maybe medicine or maybe other type of treatment. Then we'll talk about wellness, telehealth and behavior health. So these are some of the segments in which post Obamacare we have seen a tremendous changes. In telehealth segment only, in the last couple of years, we have seen new companies, new ISVs coming up in the market with new ideas and you know they are doing pretty, they are pretty successful. Then we'll talk about behavior health and brain health. Again, post Obamacare in this segment we have seen you know many new mandates and regulations. So those new those new mandates and regulations have given given birth to many applications and portals. Then we'll talk about chronic disease treatment and care coordination. So when I say chronic disease, so diseases like liver disease, heart disease, obesity, cancer, diabetics, all those things comes under this category. And for each and every disease, certain portals and applications are available with the help of which a patient can, you know, uh, improve his health, his or her health. 
then we will talk about delivery and point of care, diagnosis and emergency medicine. Under this line of business, you know, uh, we have seen various changes, tremendous changes in this segment and new ideas again, new applications are coming up. Then we will talk about uh, medical imaging. So when I say imaging, so all the images like ECG image, MRI image, X-ray image, all those images are stored in my port, EHR, EMR portal or in my web application. With the help of those images, I provide an easy, you know, check, cross check, cross verify my results. So, you know, the conversion of all the paperways we got into digital form. So, all these 16 or 17 segments represent the conversion. How these things are helpful in converting the entire EHR, EMR system as well as, you know, uh, the various information which are available for payers, providers and for government bodies. Next, we will focus some light on evolution of healthcare digitization. So here is a, you know, some stats which shows that, you know, uh, the green one shows the percentage increase. In, a, in particular, in last two or three years, we have seen 61% of increase in social media. So when I say social media, it's nothing but a presence of payers, providers and other stakeholders into social media like Facebook, Twitter or LinkedIn. So these guys are using social media to promote their health plans, to promote their hospitals or chains. And they are building a brand, a strong brand with the help of social media. So we have seen 61% increase in investment in this particular area. Then comes our mobile applications and tablet applications. Today when you go to any hospital or any hospital chain, you will find that all the doctors or providers, they are using either tablets or mobiles and they can easily you know write up things and they can make up note or they will even prescribe with the medicine with the help of their tablets and that uh, e-prescription will directly go to you know the pharmacy and the pharmacist will send the medicine to your either to your bed or maybe to your home so such kind of you know announcement or such kind of changes we have seen post obamacare and then we'll talk about customer analytics so again so if i say that you know in most of the segment, the growth rate is, growth rate is more than around 50%. So all the segments, be it content management, be it predictive analysis or campaign management, all the activities, all the major, you know, uh, segment, they have grown and the increased percentage is already there. Scorecards or dashboards. So scorecard or dashboards are nothing but a scorecard for a provider. You know, they analyze the provider based on various measures. And we have seen already a good amount of increase. So, okay, looking at the looking at these numbers, digital health is surely a hot trend, and as you mentioned, many organizations are looking forward eagerly to the digitization of various healthcare services. Could you throw some light on uh, the way digitization will have an impact on the various stakeholders involved and what roles they can play? Sure, Shushan. So now we will talk about the impact of digitization on ISVs, payers and providers. So these are the main three stakeholders in US healthcare ecosystem. And how digitization help, help these stakeholders or what is the impact, maybe positive or negative impact on various stakeholders. So we will first start with ISVs. So when I say US healthcare domain, so you know, it represents 18% of US economy and yet it is one of the last sectors to undergo technology based change. But in the last 5 to 10 years we have seen tremendous changes in healthcare segment and you know we have seen many n number of ISVs coming up, setting up their new company, setting up, coming up with new ideas and doing pretty well in this particular segment. So a recent report from Gartner says that in couple of years by 2017 the digital startup funding so now I'm saying talking about only digital startup, digital healthcare startups, that funding will be doubled in next three years. It will reach up to 6.5 billion by 2017. And it's already there and you know various companies are doing pretty good, pretty good. And to you know escalate such kind of activities, you know, ISV activities, various various short and long term digital startup healthcare program, accelerator programs are available. For example, Rock Health is there, Startup Health is there, New York Digitization Healthcare Accelerator. So these programs are nothing. If you know, if you are ISV, so you will submit your idea to this particular organization, 
and based on your idea they are going to evaluate your idea for three months six months or for nine months and once they evaluate your idea they are going to provide you some funding based on the your idea potential and you know funding is tremendous so in in the last couple of years we have seen billions and billions of dollars of funding in particular digital healthcare segment and such programs n number of programs are already available in the market around 40 or 50 programs are there which evaluate the idea of uh, ISV. So when I say, uh, now I'll talk about stats. So if, so the figure shows, you know, the funding, ISV funding from 2010 to 2014. So if you say post Obama care in 2010, 1.1 billion dollars got invested into 142, you know, startups. And this was a very starting, and you know, 142 company started in its very first year. Then next year you'll see directly increase of 100 startups. 242 startup ISV started in 2011 with an investment of 1.7 billion. So huge investment, huge you know potential is there in this market. And in 2012 again the number just got doubled from 242 to 447. In the next year plus more hundred. So in 2013 533 startups were there with a worth funding of 2.8 billion dollars. So huge potential, huge investment is there. And uh, in for 2014, we have the data up to third quarter of 2014, and up to third quarter of 2014, we have seen 347 startups in this segment with an investment of five billion dollars. So you know, various companies, various startups, they are coming up with new ideas, and various accelerator, health program accelerator, they are helping those companies out, and you know, making all the things possible actually on the floor. Now we will talk about the impact of digitization on providers. So whenever I say providers, so the first term which comes in my mind is meaningful use. Another very important decision of Obama on Obamacare and uh, they have, you know, uh, converted the entire, you know, paper-based record into digital records. And they have already coming up, come, came up with meaningful stage one and meaningful stage two. Now in 2015 we are waiting for you know, various changes in meaningful stage too. So this was the very first step and uh, post this step we have seen various providers, doctors using tablets, mobile, mobiles and laptops to, you know, analyze the patient data and give the tablets or prescription based on the past day, patient's data. So now I talk about the CMS ESR incentive program. So we have seen a tremendous growth. So it was 18% only 18% of the providers use EHR systems in 2001. But now, if you see, the number has increased to 78% in 2013. And maybe by 2016 or 17, 100% of the providers, they will be using one of the EHR EMR systems available in the market. So you can see, you know, a tremendous growth and tremendous changes we have seen. And we have seen that more than 15.8 billion for Medicare and 8.1 billion dollars for Medicaid payments. So these payments are already be done by CMS to those providers who have adopted any one of the EHR system. So these were the assets from in the three years from May 2011 to May 2014. So CMS has distributed all these payments and still CMS is distributing various other payments and incentives to all the providers after adopting meaningful stage two and in future when they will adopt meaningful stage three, they will be given some amount of payment. And these payments are you as you can see are huge in number. So all those EHR and ER EMR activities has resulted into you know some of the side or some of the side services. When I say side services, these are like scheduling and appointment booking apps and portals. A patient sitting at a home or a member sitting at a home can book an appointment with a particular doctor, with a particular provider, office choice, and with the help of those portals and applications. Then patient engagement portals and apps. So most of the payers and providers, they want, you know, more no amount of engagement with their patients. So, you know, uh, what are the patient needs? A patient can write up an email, can do a FaceTime, can do a Skype call, etc. with their providers uh, from time to time. 
we are going to talk about impact of digitization on payers. So this is you know one of the biggest segment, biggest sector of US healthcare economy, US healthcare economy, all the health insurance companies. So we have seen a good shift or a tremendous shift from B2B to B2C. So there was a time when all the health insurance company they just focus on the organizations. They were trying to sell the programs to their plans to different organizations. And different organizations sell those programs, those plans to their employees. But post Obamacare, there was a tremendous change. Obama said that we need to provide insurance, health insurance to 45 million uninsured Americans. So, you know, they are coming up with different uh, promotional activities, marketing activities in order to attract the end user. End user is nothing but, you know, the member or the patient who is going to buy a health insurance program. So for building the image or a brand building activities are there by these health insurance companies on various social media platforms, social media websites. And these, all the health insurance companies, they are using population health management and analytical engines in order to promote themselves in a particular area. And you know, uh, when an agent of a particular health insurance company is there to sell a program to a customer, so they are equipped with such kind of mobile application or tablet application, which will fill up all the vital information of the provider or of the customer. And based on all the vital information or if the customer is facing with some disease called obesity or diabetics, they are going to produce five or six health plans. So a customer can choose one of the health plans out of those plans, which suits the personality of that particular customer. You know, such type of analytical applications and, you know, uh, things are available with the agents of the health insurance companies. So this was one part of, you know, health insurance company. Another is the administrative services for all the payers. So when I say administrative services, so these are nothing but a provider contract management and credentialing. So a health insurance company need to maintain the contract with various providers in various counties. So he need to have a count, you know, PCP count, ENT count, and all, all those count with them. So, you know, <coughs> with the help of digitization, they are doing all those things automatically. They have automated the entire, you know, spectrum. Then comes provider network management. In provider network management, they are, you know, CMS says that a particular health insurance company must have X number of PCPs or X number of ENTs in a particular area. So they need to mentor, monitor the number of providers in that particular area. In order to monitor those things efficiently, we have you know something called provider network management. So this is again an analytics tool based on CMS, uh, you know mandate. Then comes provider performance assessment. So based on PQRS and HADIS measure, here payers are ad assessing the performance of a provider and they are providing star rating to that particular provider. So suppose Mr. John has a health insurance company, has a health insurance from XYZ company. So he will go into the website of XYZ company and he will, you know, search he is looking for a PCP. So he will search for a PCP in his particular zip code or in his county and he will get a list of five or six PCPs. And a star rating will be given to each and every PCP. It may be five, it may be four, it may be three. And based on the star rating, you know, Mr. John can evaluate which provider, which PCP is best for him. So, you know, such type of uh, analytics is available in the market with the advancement in digitization. Then comes member engagement portals and apps. So, this is one segment in which payer, you know, investing a lot in order to engage their members as much as they can. They are coming up with, you know, various coaching classes, various wellness and fitness programs in order to engage their members so that a member will be engaged with a particular organization for his lifelong health insurance. So now we'll talk about, you know, the digital transformation of various healthcare processes. So when I say digital healthcare, healthcare processes, so these are nothing but the various market segments like wellness and fitness in which we have seen tremendous changes. N number of companies, you know, they are coming up with new ideas and new solutions in this particular area. So first we'll take wellness and fitness. So you know, uh, nowadays with any health plan or with all the, most of the payers, they are providing health, health and wellness classes free of cost with their health plan. 
So just you need to buy a health plan and you need to enroll in that particular wellness class or treatment class. And if you uh, attend that plan for program for say for one month or for two months, in return you will get some reward points. So suppose uh, someone attended a program and she got 180 reward points after completing that particular wellness program of two months. And those 180 points will be reimbursed against the premium which she need to pay to the health insurance company. So you know such type of uh, wellness classes are available, reward management portals and applications are available which will give you a brief idea how many points rewards you got if you complete this exercise. How many rewards will you get if you uh, run for a marathon, say for 5 kilometers or for 10 kilometers. Such type of you know analytics is available. Then we'll talk about disease management and clinical integration of programs. So you know when I say detail disease management, so this is nothing you know maybe a disease called liver problem. So suppose a patient has a liver problem and based on his clinical data, a coach or a wellness uh, trainer will identify that this particular patient have a liver problem. So he, this coach or this trainer will guide that particular member according to his need. He may ask him to quit smoking, to quit drinking or such type of things are involved in such type of disease management programs. And all these programs and disease management activities are possible with the help of portals and application uh, with support wellness and you know fitness data. Then we'll talk about uh, weight management. One big problem of US you know is obesity. You know we, we can see we have you know such data in America where we found many Americans which are you know struggling from this disease called obesity. So various weight management programs are available. And all these programs, some of the programs come free of cost with my health insurance and some are paid. And those programs, they use the clinical data and based on the clinical data, they do the analytics part and produce the result. And based on that result, the trainer is going to train that particular member. Then comes employee well wellness services. So most of the organization in US, they have adopted any one of the wellness programs and they are doing pretty good in this particular area. Counseling stress reduction, acupuncture, cardiac and pulmonary rehabilitation. So all these you know are some of the parts which come under wellness and fitness category. That's great Pulkin. Uh, this definitely encourages many people to become fit and healthy. Uh, but as you said the data being amassed and all for an average Joe like me this can become a bit overwhelming. Like, uh, am I doing it right? Is the activity suited for me? It, it would be nice if there is a system uh, in place which can communicate or provide information for uh, various tips and uh, things around. Yes, Sushant. To answer your question, so my next slide talks about patient communication. So this is one of the you know most important aspect how a health insurance company or provider is going to interact with their member or patient. So you know with the help of web portals, uh, FaceTime and video conferencing. So a person can see his provider or doctor sitting from his home, his or her home and can chat with a provider. So such type of portals, applications are available in the market in order to engage their patient. So you know he can just write up a mail, can do a WhatsApp message or maybe some other mode can just call up and all those stuff are available and fix an appointment with a particular provider. Or maybe this treatment can be done with the help of my web, with the help of web portal. And once the treatment is done, the provider is going to you know give some pharmacy, give some drugs or something to the pharmacy and those drugs will be delivered to that particular doorstep of that particular patient with the help of such portals and applications. So with the enhancement of patient communication, now they are talking, you know, they are talking to educate their patient. So suppose there is a patient called Mr. John and Mr. John is suffering from diabetics. So such type of dataization activities, the portals and application, they will, you know, give the data to Mr. John that you are facing a problem called diabetics and these are five or six alternative options, alternative treatment options. So Mr. John can adopt any one of the treatment processes. He may join you know, some coaching classes or some yoga classes which are related to diabetics treatment. So such type of shared decision making. 
so this is one very important you know aspect uh, which we have seen in last couple of years then the moment of task based relationship to you know task based to relationship based care so nowadays you know providers payers all these stakeholders they have a really good relationship with their members or patient they treat them they greet them they, they drink coffee with them so such type of you know activities are involved is possible because of such portals and applications so one very important you know segment of us healthcare industry that is telehealth so it was just uh, to 240 million of revenue in 2013 and uh, it is expected that uh, you know it will reach up to 1.9 billion by 2018 uh, annual growth rate of 50% which is you know pretty very very much you know every year this is this industry is growing like fox and hikes so and this and this uh, us telehealth started just only 4 5 5 years back only and focus on chronic medical illnesses so all the uh, you know diseases like diabetes liver problems cancer obesity heart diseases on all those things you know are treated with the help of you know such kind of portals and applications now we'll talk about you know electronic health record ehr so the very first aspect of ehr is clinical decision support system so this is the you know backbone of any ehr which take all the decision and based on those decision those things will be highlighted to a particular provider and based on you know those that data analytics data a provider can take a decision so up again our provider portal is available which have various aspects like we have add services that is admission discharge and transfer we have computerized provider order entry in which a provider will enter all the orders be it lab test be it pharmacy drugs or be it anything and those orders will be transferred directly to the pharmacy or to the lab and based on those things the lab assistant will do the test on that particular patient then very one very new thing which we have seen in this year only clinical quality measures cms has come up with you know around various measures around clinical quality and uh, they are just enhancing the kind of data and you know they are doing uh, analytics part on those data and coming up with fruitful results and those results are used by all the providers in order to provide good and efficient care to their patients then we have billing patient ehr transfer so this is nothing you know in ehr transfer so a patient got admitted to hospital a and after some time he transfer to another county and got admitted to hospital b so all the data will be transferred from patient hospital a to hospital v with the help of such kind of you know portals and applications then comes patient portal this is very one you know a very important aspect where patient can log in and can see all the vital information one year back or maybe two year back so all the you know past health data will be recorded in my portal and at any moment of time i can log in log in and can see my health record my prescription my immunization details my clinical summary and even i can interact with my provider <coughs> even i can write up a mail or send a message to him so you know post ehr emr incentive program we have seen a good amount of changes and all those things are in the favor of providers as well as in the favor of patients so now we would like to focus you know throw some light on preventive health care so you know this is something i will explain preventive health care with a example so i'll talk about a lady called mrs jones and mrs jones she is a working woman she has two children she manages home she go to her office and she hardly get any time for exercise or for any other physical activity so whatever she exercise she does is just running after her children so that's it so she purchases a health plan from abc company and she got a pre preventive healthcare breast screening breast cancer screening so when she got it at free of cost so we she went to that particular clinic and got her breast cancer screening done when she the screening was done so she found that she is on the very first stage of you know breast cancer and she was not able to recognize because there were no pain nothing else so it can only be recognized by you know by some treatment or by some diagnosis therapies 
So she came to know that uh, she is on the very first stage of breast cancer and uh, doctor advises that what are the things and that cancer can be treated in a particular time span of time. And uh, all the providers they advise some of kind of treatment plans, some kind of you know, she first thing which she need to change is her lifestyle. So she need to do exercise regularly, she may join some gym or some you know yoga classes or some other kind of classes which will you know help her to fight against her cancer. So here comes the importance of detailed healthcare. So she may, you know, she just wanted to install the, you know, application in her mobile or in her tablet and can monitor her vitals. So day one, she ins installed that app and recorded all the vitals in form related to breast cancer. And after one year, after one month or two months when she is doing exercise, she is going to, you know, see that what are the changes which are coming up into things. So this is an example for preventive healthcare, you know, and uh, in some of the, you know, payers they are not charging anything. So no insurance co-pays or out-of-pocket cost is there for certain kind of preventive screening. So this is again a very good thing from Obamacare. And uh, we in US we have a specific force, you know, US Preventive Services Task Force, specifically working for preventive healthcare sector. And what these guys are doing, they are diagnosing, monitoring of various chronic diseases with the help of such portals and apps. And these portals, you know, and application help patient as well as the health insurance company in order to reduce the cost. And healthcare cost is reduced up to a very high extent. And the patient will get the treatment at a very first phase of, you know, of such kind of things. Remote monitoring, prescription reminders, such type of applications are there, which will help a patient in order to, you know, it will just give up a pop-up or a reminder that boss, this is a time you need to take your medicine. This is a time you need to take a particular injection or a particular dose. So such type of application and portals are available in the market. So, you know, CDC says or CMS says that if everyone in US, they receive a clinical preventive care, so every year we are going to save hundred thousands of lives. So these, you know, these hundred thousand are nothing but all the Americans for whom, whose treatment or, or you know, whose uh, disease like cancer, obesity or diabetics get uh, diagnosed at an early stage and those, those lives can be saved. So over here I would request my co-host Satish to talk about how these, you know, processes will be, you know, done uh, automatically with the help of various tools and technologies. Thanks Pulki. Just Pulkit explain you in detail features of digital healthcare and EHR based applications. But question arises in mind, is there anything we can provide new as compared to EHR and EMR solutions? Is it possible to assist patient from home or is it possible that physician can monitor patient health from home? The answer to those questions is, is using latest sensor based technologies we can achieve this. As we can see, there are various sensor-based health monitoring tools available in the market. Bluetooth enabled body weight machine, heart rate me measurement tool, glucose level identification tool, or Bluetooth enabled blood pressure measurement tool, or Bluetooth enabled stethoscope. These devices submits all monitored values to smartphone using Bluetooth API. Then smartphone app submits all the monitored values to cloud hosted server using REST API call. Physician then access all patient monitored values from cloud hosted server to his device. It can be a tablet or it can be a, a smartphone or it, it can be a web portal. So then physician can treat patient remotely. Also, we can add some intelligence to cloud hosted server by impl implementing analytic jobs. So, analytic job hosted on cloud server can monitor patient blood pressure. If patient blood pressure goes high or low as compared to expected level, then analytic job can notify physician. Another example of analytic job can be monitoring most effective drugs for given medication, for given problem. For example, 10 patient is having asthma and they got different medication. So analytic job 
will find out which are the most effective uh, medication for customer and next on, onwards it can suggest most effective drug. We can also implement telemedicine or daily care by hosting streaming server in cloud and which enable us to have video calls or a telemedicine with the physician. So, Wowza media server can be used to implement video, video calls as it support RTMP, RTP or various streaming protocols. So then physician and patient can have video calls on smartphones or it can be on web application. So as we can see how application flows in terms of architecture. As user communities can be a patient, physician or it can be a hospital nurse. So patient might have sensor based devices to manage, monitor health like heart rate or blood pressure, glucose level monitors. These devices can be Bluetooth enabled So using Bluetooth API we can connect to smartphone or it can be app services. So app services can be embedded device with Bluetooth and internet support. So both smartphone or app services then submits all monitored values to cloud hosted EHR or EMR application using REST API. Then physician can access those values and treat patient, patient accordingly. So all the treatment will go as a notification to patient's smartphone. So patient will get all the treatment details. So also uh, as data grows, it becomes very difficult to analyze data. So we need to, then we need to compromise with performance. Using big data technologies, we can achieve all the analytics without hitting performance. So analytics can be implemented by using big data technologies framework like MapReduce Jobs. That's great, Sadish. Uh, you have very well explained the generic workflow which goes into a, into this new generation healthcare architecture. Now, as we move on to the next session, like me, many of our audience would be interested in knowing how all this can be achieved. Your chance. So, to develop healthcare application, we need recent and government approved data. Uh, as data is most crucial thing in healthcare sector. Uh, for example, we should be able to find all medications approved by FDA or we should be able to find all ICD classified diseases. So also systems should be able to provide education resources to patients as explained by like wellness and fitness things. So, there are various tools available in the market which help us to have all the things in place. For example, IMO, First Data Bank, Medline Plus, MD Link, and many more. I just listed a couple of those, but there are many more in market. For example, IMO tool provides all diseases, procedures, and intervention details. Uh, classified by standard standards like ICD-9, ICD-10 or SNOMED CT. Uh, First Data Bank which provides all medications approved by FDA government and classified by standards like NDC and RX norm codes. Uh, Medline Plus, this tool provides education resources like disease detail or disease symptoms or treatment details or how it can, we can have precautions for a particular disease. Nowadays, a digital healthcare data is growing very fast. Now question arises in mind, how we can scale as data grows? Or can we provide healthcare solution as SaaS model? Can we provide solution based on multi-tenant architecture? Or will data be uh, secured on SaaS model? Answer to all of our question is like, yes, we can do. Using cloud-based big data technologies, we can scale out our application as our need. 
and all hospital data can be secured by physically distributing in regions and encrypting it. Using technologies like HBase, Hadoop, we can achieve multi-tenancy and SaaS models. Also, these frameworks support data encryption and data security. So another important part of healthcare sector is data analytics. So using analytics, we can monitor all data flows and other details as well. So for example, uh, let's say a patient is having a stomach problem, so analytics can monitor next four days weather condition and it can su suggest, uh, suggest precautions to the patient. So patient can take precautions accordingly. Uh, another thing is like regarding front-end UI. So EHR portal UI should be simple, lightweight, and its most important thing is it should be responsive. Using jQuery and lightweight libraries like Twitter library called Bootstrap UI can be used for designing content UI of the web portal. Some external framework may require depending on the uh, implementation. Just Fulkir explain you regarding meaningful use. Some compliances may require like application should be able to do drug drug interaction check, drug dose check or drug allergy or duplicate therapy check. So this can be achieved by using framework called say a made knowledge framework which enables us to have these checks. Finally, we'll go through some do's and don'ts suggestions. So it's, it's preferred to start implementing cloud-based services as it helps scaling application as number of customer increases. To make application healthcare compliant, its most important part is its security. So data encryption can be achieved using big data technologies as those support data encryption and web application security can be achieved using open web application security project which, using which we, we can avoid scripting attacks like JavaScript, CSS, HTML injection attacks. Application should be a simple, lightweight and it should be responsive so that it should support all the multi-devices. If we are starting application development from scratch, use proper scalable core framework so that should not cause any problem letter or rework. As sometimes rework and performance optimization cost more than redevelopment. Uh, do not introduce too many technologies in the application as it affects on maintenance and development cost. Uh, sometimes like in EHR application, forms are bigger and bigger. Like patient registration, there are various requirements like patient birth information, insurance information, billing billing information, which is takes around like 200 to 400 form fields. So we should have system configuration where we can put default values so that customer cannot get any negative feedback for the configuration value. During application development, timely check on healthcare compliance so that we can avoid rework like a phrases. Do not put any business logic on browser side as it creates security violations. Thanks to all. That was so much. Oh, that was a great session, Pulkit and Satish. Thank you. And I'm sure the audience too is pleased with such a rich and insightful session. We'll be taking questions from the audience now. I remind you once again, if you have any queries, please type in the questions pane. If due to time constraints, we are not able to cover your questions in today's session, we'll definitely send you the Q&A document covering answers to all the questions raised today. Okay, my team has just informed me that we have a lot of questions coming in. 
I'll just take up the first one. Okay. What are the two or three things which an ISV must keep in mind if they want to enter into digital healthcare? I repeat for many of our readers, an ISV is an independent software vendor. Yes, Sushant. So in order to start for an ISV, so they need to identify the market segment. Out of the 16 or 17, you know, segments which I have mentioned, you know, in the webinar, so on which segment they want to, you know, develop a product or their offering. So based on that area, they will be working on. And second step will be, you know, they need to use the latest technologies and the platforms available in the market to develop their product or offering. And uh, they may also, you know, register themselves in various healthcare funding programs and get the investment or funds from there. Thank you, Bulkit. We have another question. Okay. Uh, what is IMO and how it works? You want to take it, Satish? Yeah, sure, Sushan. So, IMO is basically intelligent medical objects. Uh, it's a cloud-hosted service and using which we can have all the medic uh, problems, diseases, all the de we can get all the details. Uh, they are providing based on service based. So it's basically cloud hosted and we can get sub subscription from them. As they are releasing a timely basis, like all the new problems which detected and identified by international uh, classified diseases. Okay. I hope that answers your question. I have another one. Is there any framework which helps to support mobile devices, big data technologies and scalability? I am sure, quite sure you might understand the question in the context of this year. Yeah, yeah, sure. So there are many more frameworks, but uh, one of the framework which is well known for integration framework like it supports big data technologies, mobile devices support, application security support. So framework called Spring as it supports MVC design pattern, it has big data technology integration, it has mobile devices support and also it supports NoSQL kind of databases and many more frameworks. Okay. So Spring Framework is the one you should go with if you want to support multiple technologies and devices. Thank yes. you, Satish. Okay, my next question and one of the last few we will be taking today. We have seen huge investments in the last five years. What do you expect in the coming decade? Yes, Sushant. So, you know, dataization of healthcare industry just started four or five years back. So we are going to see huge investment and growth in the coming, in the sector in the coming decades. And uh, every year if we talk, if we talk about CMS or other government bodies, they are coming up with new regulations and new mandates. So in order to support those mandates and regulations, new portal development, new applications, mobile apps and tablet apps will be coming up in the market. So I can say that there's a huge potential in coming one or two decades in healthcare industry for digitization. Okay, thank you, Bulgit. I'll take this last question before my team is already telling me we are already out of time, but I'll just take this last one. Uh, you are talking about the shift from business to business to business to consumers. How is it helpful for the average patient or the average person? Yes, Sushan. So it's very helpful for an average patient or a member. So it's like when the entire industry shifted, the healthcare payer industry shifted from B2B to B2C, so there are a lot of many options for health plans available in the market. So competition increased. Hence there will be, a, you know, there are a lot of good services from payers. So add-on services like preventive screening, wellness and fitness programs, coaching classes, all those things are available from health insurance companies. And, you know, with the coming upcoming of health insurance exchanges, we have seen, you know, good competition, less amount of premium and all those things in the market. And it's no doubt it's very beneficial 
for an individual to buy a health insurance program from HIX or from any other source. Okay. That's all we have time for today, folks. I re remind you that today's webinar is being recorded and everyone will receive an email with the link to view the recording of the event along with the Q&A document and the presentation itself. With this, we conclude today's session. Once again, thank you all for joining us and have a great day.